A message to my younger self. Today I found myself on uh, Snapchat for the first time in a while and I found a tab called uh, Memories which uh, if you don't know it's basically a tab where it stores all of your like saved pictures and uh, text stuff like that from over the years of using Snapchat. I haven't used Snapchat in a while so um, all of my stuff in there was really odd but I had to flick through. My Memories tab was uh, grade A giga cringe. <laughs> But it was actually quite a humbling experience and I came out actually thankful at the end and very grateful for how far I've I've come as a person over the past few years. Especially this last year. This this year's been crazy for, for, for growth for me. Amongst the awful photos of me writing walls of text to women <laughs> and also terrible selfies, was a post I made on my Snapchat story back in early 2019. Now, I overshared a lot on my Snapchat stories back in the day. I, I didn't have any outlets to pour my emotion into or any of my energy. So I often ended up just getting overwhelmed with emotions and just posting it on Snapchat stories, Instagram stories, whatever it may be, whatever I'm using at the time. The post was basically me asking for advice, but it reads like I'm pleading for help. It's quite jarring for me to read because of how honest it is and how vulnerable it makes me look. And it's such a public place too. So I'm gonna read this post out to you and uh, I'm gonna reply to myself um, now, two years over two years later because uh, I'm hoping that someone in a similar position to me two years ago might watch this video right now and just get any sort of value from it and uh, be able to move forward from this place that they're at because I, I know how it feels. Looking for advice. It's around about this time where I reflect on past relationships and begin to want another one. I feel a hole in my heart and pure sadness and I feel completely alone. This is also around a time where in relationships, I would typically spam my girlfriend with messages telling her how much she means to me and such. In reality, with how I am now, a relationship is not likely. I can't even get my hair cut alone. How can I give a girl what she wants and deserves if I can't take her on a date without having a panic attack, lol. <laughs> so my question is, how can I fill this hole in my heart? As soon as my mind becomes idle, I am overwhelmed with sadness. And I get that's probably a part of depression, but when I have been with someone, it has been better and has served as a distraction. Has anyone got any advice for me? It's okay if you don't understand. Thank you. Yeah. So there was a period in time where I had nights like this every single night. And um, it was it was abhorrent. I would know exactly what's gonna happen when I like get off, let's say I'm on Discord. I'm on Discord and it's like 3 a.m. The last person in the call is like, okay, dude, I'm going to bed. I would sit there and think like, well, it's time. I would leave it to the very last second at every opportunity to, to face my own feelings. I would often exhaust myself just so I didn't have to think about it as long as I usually would. It was terrible. Here's some advice to younger Sam. Sam, you are the anxious attachment type. You are fearful for the loss of connection that you could have with someone. Your fear of being alone and your lack of an abundance mindset and the fact that relationships are actually very high up on your priority list doesn't make for a good combination. Um, just to quickly explain an abundance mindset, it's self-explanatory really, but an abundance mindset is basically when you go into situations with the mindset of, oh, if this goes wrong, if that goes wrong, then I have this option open to me, right? And that automatically, my dog's going crazy right now. I think we got a delivery. <laughs> With this type of mindset, you uh, immediately have a certain level of confidence to everything you're doing. And this is really, really useful if you are dating and, you know, anything to do with relationships. When you date someone, they can tell that you're down horrendous. So abundance mindset, everything that you do will come from a place of confidence and security. And that's very attractive to women and men. Anxious attachment type people often project idealized images of people onto others, which is why you fairly often got your heart broken and found yourself in more than one 
unhealthy relationships. Your lack of self-esteem makes you blind to the obvious flaws and differences in personalities to people you speak with. And it also makes you drop any plans you may have just to spend more time with that person, which again, is not coming from a place of abundance and it's not attractive. It is a breeding grounds for a terrible relationship. You have to balance these aspects of your life, Sam. You can't just fucking go all in every time, bro. <laughs> the anxiety attachment type um, also makes you constantly question why would she be in a relationship with a loser like me? Which is further exasperated if the relationship you're in is long distance. And look, Sam, I, I still get this. I still struggle with this, okay? But there's ways to deal with this and there's ways to tone it down a little bit. So now you understand it a little bit better. What are some things you can change? Because you can't really not be the anxious attachment type anymore. It originates from uh, childhood and typically your relationship with your parents. So the way to tackle this is actually just to be mindful of it and to just do some things differently to ease down the, the symptoms. And uh, number one would be to unironically up your grind set. <laughs> Gather hobbies and interests which take up your free time. Not only does this give you more value and also up your self-esteem, but it also gives you less time to think about the hole in your heart and more time to think about things which will make you a better person. I incorporated this myself in this past year by starting to work out every day on a daily basis. And eventually when my confidence went up with that and I also beat my anxiety, I started a gym membership. And going to the gym is one of the best pursuits you can go on. Actively chasing your dream body and getting healthier at the same time, it's a no-brainer. It also gives you more confidence and again, self-esteem. I also started to take my hobby video editing more seriously and I do it a lot more often on a daily basis now. And I'm constantly looking to improve and expand my skills, taking courses, etc. Photoshop as well, anything like that. Take a hobby and just work on that. Spend more time thinking about that. Number two is to stop going into long distance relationships like like what the fuck are you doing bro <laughs> norway russia the philippines the united states mr fucking worldwide <laughs> going into relationships where you can't physically be there for your significant other will exasperate your anxiety by tenfold i personally am convinced that long distance relationships do not work if you are the anxious attachment type and to be frank the the types of women who go into these relationships can be nuts <laughs> i don't remember the last time i had a night that was so overwhelmingly uncomfortable like the one you're experiencing in this Snapchat story, Sam. Fellow anxious attachment style friends, I hope that helped. I know it seems like very little, but if you begin this process, especially the first one where you start to look after yourself, you start to up your grind set, you start to increase your value as a person, you spend less time thinking about shit, which doesn't, to be, to be frank, it doesn't matter. Other stuff will begin to come and then you can begin working on that stuff too. There is an attachment style quiz which you can find out what attachment style you are obviously anxious is just one of them from what i've seen there's typically four there's secure anxious avoidant and fearful if you're an anxious attachment style by the way guys you might want to avoid the avoidant people because you don't mix very well <laughs> but yeah that questionnaire quiz whatever you want to call it it's in the description you can go watch it after my video only after my video also like the video <laughs> Only after my video. Only after. <laughs> Sam, the reason you specifically think about all of these overwhelming thoughts at nighttime is because that's the only time you're not wrapped up in instant gratification activities such as games, Discord, YouTube videos. The only time your brain gets to think about these things is when you remove yourself from these distractions, AKA bedtime, which was usually as fucking late as possible. <laughs> You'll always feel this way, Sam. During the day, you're spurged out on games, but when night comes, the last person on Discord goes offline and you'll be left alone with your thoughts and you'll be overwhelmed with feelings of inadequacy. And there's a good reason for that. You are inadequate, Sam. <laughs> you are a bundle of potential and you're wasting away in your room playing games and investing your time and energy into the wrong things and the wrong people. That feeling of inadequacy is a blessing 
let it upset you and let it anger you. Then get the fuck up and do something about it. It was around eight months ago now where I had a switch. I was absolutely sick to death of allowing my anxiety make decisions and control my life. From that day on, I make my own decisions and my anxiety usually sits in the passenger seat, usually gagged and blindfolded. It took me a long time to get to that stage of sickness to finally overcome my anxiety. But it would have taken me years less if I spent less time zonked out on instant gratification stuff and more time inside my own head trying to understand why I feel the way I do. So here's your actionable step if you're in a um, similar situation. And you, younger Sam, you fucker, I know you're watching this somehow. <laughs> Spend less time indulging in retard shit. Everyone has their own vices, mine was video games. You can tell, you can tell just by looking at someone that they're a fucking gamer. Look at me, I'm a gamer, dude. I have the humility to admit that I am slash was fucking full-blown addicted to video games. I have, over the past few months, uninstalled every single competitive video- well. I have been playing a little bit of Hearthstone over the past few weeks, which is a complete waste of fucking time. But in general, <laughs> I have uninstalled every single competitive video game from my PC, and I'm playing significantly less of them in my spare time. And for the first time in a while, that allowed me to actually think about things I want to achieve, my aspirations, people that I want to keep around in my life, etc. These are all very important things, way more important than your gay League of Legends rank, which is fucking average, by the way. You spend all that time thinking about it and you're fucking average, bro. Cringe. Kind of cringe, bro. Thinking allows you to make better decisions for future Sam. Better and happier future Sam equals less sad boy hours. And I'll be honest with you, you'll feel terrible for a while and it will take some time but if you don't make that leap you're gonna stay on the trajectory which you're on which is down make the decision now the sooner you start the better honestly start doing stuff like this and everything else will follow naturally oh and stop watching youtube in bed too i guess once you stop indulging so much during the day this will become easier so prioritize the main vices first which is video games and then you can start this is what i mean start doing this shit and then you will start to, you know, figure things out. Figure things out which are good for you, figure things out which are bad for you, you'll become a better person, etc. It's literally, you start doing shit like this, you will go like fucking this. You will just go <laughs> anyway, for a while you'll become angry and upset at the world, your family, your friends, and also yourself. But hopefully given some time and some thought, you'll become so grateful for the place that you're in now. I hope that advice helped anyone who has addictions to instant gratification. Sam, you're actually spot on when you say, how can I give a girl what she wants and deserves if I can't take her on a date without having a panic attack? While you may find someone who's willing to go into a relationship with you in your current state, it is absolutely not what you should be settling for. If you'd spent more time in your head, you would have realized that relationships are one of the last things you should be thinking about right now, despite how happy they make you. The logistics don't line up, the types of women you would attract would have their own issues, and it would give you a false sense of comfort with where you are right now. Again, embrace the discomfort and do something about it. You know what you have to do, but you don't do it because you keep going back into your little comfort bubble. That bubble and the people inside of it are your mortal enemies. The sooner you embrace the discomfort, the sooner you can begin your road to genuine and long-lasting happiness. I know what you're thinking as well. Oh man, I'll never do better than her. She was so good. She was so perfect. Shh. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Ah, shut the fuck up. You actually don't even know how great you are, and you're not even remotely close to your potential, but you will surprise yourself every single time, every single milestone. Not many people fully understand you, Sam, and the posts that you make on your Snapchat, they're not they're not gaining you any anything, bro. <laughs> no one no one wants to read this shit, bro. No one cares, okay? <laughs> but I do. I understand you, and I know for a fact deep down you have it in you. Don't do it for anyone else, do it for yourself. You don't even know what happiness is yet. It's not a 
play of the game on Overwatch. <laughs> I can't begin to describe to you how much happier and more content I am with my life over this last year or so. My trajectory has been, as I said, somewhat of a dab, you know. You mentioned how you can't even get your hair cut alone without getting a panic attack. Well, guess who a month or so ago went into the city center alone, got his hair cut. It's this guy. <laughs> it's this guy, it's me. <laughs> it's fucking this guy. This guy did it. I already mentioned this, but I started a gym membership too, which is something that I, I dreamed of when I was 13 years old. And then by the time I got to an age where it was appropriate to go to the gym, I was crippled with anxiety. And I've been going to the gym now uh, for two months and it's fucking fantastic, I love it. I reconnected with some old friends. I went out with them to some pubs, some bars, and they're great. We had a great time, I had a great laugh, and I look forward to seeing them again soon. I took a girl on a date a few weeks back, and a few days ago I had my first kiss. The uh, cringe one when I was 13 doesn't count. And a week ago I went for a meal with my family. At the end of the day, before I went to bed, my mom came into my room, and she told me how unbelievably different of a person that I had become since the last time we went out for a family meal. She told me that I had completely changed and that she was sure that she would have had to look after me for the rest of my life because of my anxiety. And she said that she was proud of me. All of these things were a complete alien concept to me. They all seemed like mountains just a year ago. Take the first steps today. Every single day that you're not taking action is a day you're stealing from yourself. I really hope this video helps anyone who may be in a similar situation as to I was a few years ago. It's getting more and more common that young men are finding themselves in a similar situation. That's why I made this video in case it helps even a single person or if you learn anything, that's why I've made it. I love you guys, take care.